calls it a glass coffin. His children were young, and they're grown with families of their own. Um, the things that he's seen, bad stuff, some murders. Mostly it's the daily humiliation. He went to the hole, he was sent to the hole once because the guys were in the day room talking. And it got late and a new guard on staff came into the room and she didn't like the way they were all huddled and talking. And so she called for my brother to follow her to her office. You come with me. And all the other guys just got up and walked with him. They forgot where they were. And she got scared and hit the panic button, thinking she was being ganged up on. And so my brother spent three months in the hole. I wrote a song about it. <laughs> you did. Whenever I get real upset, I just write a song. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was a traumatic time for him. Um, he was okay for a while, but you know, it got old. We've had prisoners who had their story on the wall and they've been put in the hole because the prison officials decide they're not safe. And sad, we'll get a letter and someone, they'll say, I've done 11 months in the hole, I can't take it anymore. Could you take my story down? The wall's where we put a place on our website where we put their stories. So they'll ask, you know, to be taken off the wall so they can get out of solitary confinement. So that, and... Well, and I think a lot of people write us their stories because they never really had their day in court. Uh, most of the federal prisoners uh, took a plea, what, 95%. And so the actual ability to go to trial and weigh the facts and decide are, it doesn't happen very much. So the, the wall is a way to have them be able to tell the story that they might have told in a more open courtroom setting, one that allowed a lot of evidence and, um, and was tougher on those who were uh, the snitches in the case who walked away. So there's a lot of reasons why prisoners need to have a voice. Uh, I think they sometimes think it, it'll, uh, you know, uh, there will be a, a path to release. That doesn't seem to happen too much, although we've had some notable cases that um, resulted in outright release. Uh, Tyrone Brown was a young black man in Texas as a young teenager was, did an armed robbery, didn't hurt anybody, got a deferred sentence, tested uh, positive for marijuana on a probation on a probation from his 10-year deferred sentence and the judge brought him back to court and gave him a life sentence. And so after 14, 15 years inside a Texas prison, he wrote uh, his story to us and we uh, put it on the wall. It was unbelievable, really. That We called his mother because we didn't believe it. We, did, we thought this, this can't <laughs> be true, that, that you know we hear a lot of stories. People, people tell all kinds of ways that their stories, but yeah, it was true enough. You know, he um, real poor family and didn't have much of a defense. And the judge was a notorious racist because he was certainly good at favoring uh, similarly situated white co-defendants uh, and who did much more to break their probation than this man Tyrone Brown did. Tyrone Brown um, went from his uh, having his story uh, rewritten and edited and put on the wall, a formal process, to getting a call from a Dallas Morning um, reporter, Brooks Edgerton, who said the same thing. Is he this called true? us. He called our office. <laughs> and I ended up talking with him. He says, this can't be true. You don't get a life sentence for a uh, positive marijuana test. Well, he sure did, and he wrote a big story, and, and then to make it short, he uh, that story mushroomed through the uh, Dallas Morning News up to a 2020 national story. And, and each time we told, yep. well, we told the story initially and citizens got involved. Then after the Dallas paper, more citizens mm -hmm. got a hold of us. What can we do to get them out? And then after 2020, it was quite a, a group of ad hoc citizens. And people have said, well, did you lead them? 
no, it turned out within this group there was one lawyer and he was, you know, somewhat connected and we just let what whoever could be the best leader here rise. And so it became a wonderful, powerful group of citizens. A judge almost wasn't elect reelected. Who was the judge almost didn't get reelected. Uh yes. And someone else involved it. I don't know, it's hard to remember well, all the details. But it, it became, it was significant. It was It huge. was significant enough for the governor to release him outright. Yeah. And he's, uh, we've stayed in touch over the last few years. He got married, he's having a family. His, um, you know, it's probably for us at least the best story we can think of where direct intervention and telling the story well uh, worked.